I'm going to ask you to, to go ahead and put a, a blindfold on.
and less fact-based, where we, we can run the experiment and decide X amount of government intervention in the economy is just the right amount, no more or less. It seems unlikely we'd ever agree on that, no matter how many experiments you run. Whereas with religious claims, we sort of sense like, we can really tell you whether that's true or not. Prayer and healing, run the experiment. It doesn't work. Uh, and okay, run some other experiment and so on. So I think that's, that's the reason for that. If you want to shout something out up there, I'll just repeat it, yeah? So in my experience, people that are younger, more educated, uh, professional, uh, tend to have far fewer ways to have catastrophe beliefs, fewer creationists, more people that usually have this. I've noticed that uh, the exact opposite is true when it comes to vaccination, which we alluded to earlier. So my question is, why is it that people that are intelligent, educated, grounded in generally scientific principles tend to have beliefs about vaccinations contrary to yeah, uh, I was just thinking about this the other day because um, uh, Dawkins is on Bill Maurer's show tonight, uh, real time on HBO. And uh, of course, they're going to be, it's going to be a love fest and a valentine for Richard's new book. <laughs> but if you really wanted to, to push it a little bit, you know, Bill Maurer has these, uh, these beliefs that, uh, about vaccinations, you shouldn't get them. He's very anti science when it comes to medicine, he's pro alternative medicine. He recognizes that the 9-11 truthers are just goofy beyond belief, as are the birthers. Uh, and yet he thinks that Big Pharma is in cahoots with uh, the AMA and they're trying to keep us all sick so they can make a lot of money. So here's a guy, Bill Maher, obviously very bright, and he's on, he's on our side on all these other issues and then he goes off here. Uh, I, so I'm actually not sure because uh, it could be just uh, a, a personal thing. In his case, he's a, a big PETA supporter. And PETA doesn't like uh, science when it comes to using animals for research, so maybe he's got something there. I just don't know because I don't know him uh, personally. And uh, but in general, as education goes up, belief like religiosity and superstitions go down, but not in any big dramatic way. I mean, you know, 95% of Americans believe in God, and you know, most of them have gone to college. So, and the difference between the left and the right on those beliefs is, is you know, it's pretty minimal in terms of like the number of people that believe in God. So. Uh, there's something else going on there that I think we don't fully understand yet. Yeah. Um, are children maybe more skeptical than others, and what is anything are they doing correct? <laughs> well, um, what's, what's the question? The question is, uh, thanks, is the, um, some countries are more skeptical than others, and what are they doing? <laughs> correct. It depends on which area. Uh, I mean, what we mean by skepticism, I, su I suppose, is uh, reality-based, reason-based, science-based. And uh, I think a liberal democracy is conducive to a society being more educated, for example. So having certain civil liberties and guaranteed rights and things like that leads to that kind of society versus, but you have to have, you have, to have a certain amount of wealth to do that. It's hard to, it's hard to do that in a third world nation if, if you don't even know if you're gonna eat or not. Uh, superstitions become sort of, and caring for the environment, things like that become way down the line. Um, so th that's probably the biggest thing. If being credulous is, as you said, the path of least resistance, that's what we're predisposed to. And skeptical activism wants the goal of spreading, you know, skepticism as to as many people as possible. What do you think are sort of the is it always going to be an elite group or a small group of people who are going to be skeptics, who are going to be promoting critical thinking, and that sort of thing? Or do you think it's something that actually can be taught in every school? Yeah. The, the question is, uh, it seems like skeptics are sort of a, an elite educated group, and can we get everybody, more people involved? Well, when I first got into the movement in the early 80s, uh, it was just mostly old white guys complaining about the world. <laughs> and there was much to complain about. Uh, and since then, uh, I mean, look around the crowd, you know, we have people of all ages and genders and so forth, and it's, well, too. <laughs> I know. But anyway, so uh, uh, I, I think that's just uh, broadening the umbrella to, uh, of subjects we should be interested in. And, and, and what we've tried to do at Skeptic is not just deal with the paranormal and ESP and aliens and all that. Yes, we do that. But you know, things like global warming and Holocaust revisionism and uh, any and everything should be okay for skeptical inquiry. That's fine, and that gets more and more people interested. Um, there are there are like uh, there are gender differences.